Hi everyone, so today I wanted to interview my friend Allison. I'm just going to introduce her a little bit. She is an amazing person. When we talk a lot about what we want to be when we grow up, she is one of those people who can do everything. She works full time in business, she's a yoga teacher, and she also happens to be an amazing artist. So I wanted to interview her today so that we can go through some of the things that she does at home since that's been one of our themes of the week. So hi Allison. Hi. Thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited. I'm excited too. I can already kind of peek at your art behind you. So I do have a few questions for you today if you don't mind answering them for my students. So the first one I have is how do you work on your art at home? So home is basically where I do all of my artwork um, and I work in my dining room where you see me right now. I like this spot because it's a nice big table and I have natural light sources and I have a, a regular light so depending on what type of art I'm working on, it depends on how much light you know I need, but I prefer it to be rather bright so I can see what I'm doing when I'm trying to work on stuff. Um, I basically clear the table and I roll out all the supplies that I have. I keep um, all my paints in this nifty little Tupperware. It's got my oil paint and my acrylic paint and all my paint brushes. I keep uh, a baggie of markers that I like to keep on hand because you never know, I might switch from one type of artwork to another, and Sharpies and paint pens and things like that. And then I also have this reusable gift bag that I keep all my um, all my watercolor stuff in. My paper, some art that I've already done that I just was messing around with, um, and basically some inspiration art stuff that I do and I, I kind of live in many different bags and boxes because I don't have a designated space in my home specific to do art so this is where I choose to come and of course I have my, my easel where I set my canvases and I just plop it down on the table, scroll everything out and I get to work. That is so awesome. I love your setup. And it's so true that sometimes we do just have to put things in little totes to bring, you know, here and there. So that's awesome. Um, I wanted to ask you, because so many of my students are young, what made you get started in art and how did you get started? So the first time I, I mean, I always liked coloring. Uh, as a child, I was very big into coloring books. Uh, but the thing that got me started in painting was high school. I took a painting of, of elective class uh, was in 10th grade, and that was the first time I ever picked up a paintbrush that wasn't for a specific paint project, if I was doing paper mache or something like that. Um, and we would work with on acrylic, and I loved it. it. I loved taking pictures out of magazines and trying to landscapes the best I could and you know just making art to you know kind of be that release for me so really high school was when I really started getting into art and once I realized I just got lost in it time-wise and how relaxed I would feel after I was done and how accomplished it felt to look at a piece of artwork whether it was needed more work or it was perfect or not perfect it's usually not perfect but just to say, you know, I did that. I worked on that. I put, you know, I put effort into that and I, I like the way it came out. That's awesome. And it's especially inspirational to hear that you really can start at any point in your life. You know, and once you find something that really works for you, then you can have such enjoyment in that experience. So that's awesome. Absolutely. And there's so many different mediums, which is what they call the different things that you can work with from you know, there's paints, there's chalk, there's pencils, there, you know, there's just so many things that people are getting creative with. And art doesn't necessarily have to be something you paint or draw. It could be something you create, like a, you know, like a, an assemblage, like a diorama, or building things and putting it together like a sculpture using clay. There's just 
there's so many different ways to work on art and you just gotta go whatever kind of focuses for you. So I'm so glad that you brought up medium because since we kind of have what we're going to have for this time being, um, one of the things that I've been mentioning to students is that we can take the same subject and work on it in a variety of ways. So one of the things I just love that you created were your palm tree paintings. And you had taken, I, you had seen one of my pictures from California, and then you had created a piece of art out of my photograph. So I loved how we kind of collaborated on that and that you made something so amazing out of, you know, a subject that I had used a different medium to create also. So we kind of like each took an interpretation on that. Right. When I saw your photo through Instagram, the sky just popped and the way the palm trees look like silhouettes, the black. I really like silhouette paintings. It's something that, you know, I enjoy doing. So while my painting won't be as exact and as perfect as a photo, I did what I could and I just... I did, in this case, I used watercolor because of the sky aspect. I like to use watercolor for blending different skies. It, it kind of really makes it look very natural. And your view, your perspective was almost looking up towards the palm trees. So I, I took a little bit of a take on that. And um, and this was how mine came out from your photo. But as you can see, it's definitely not perfect, right? Like you'll you'll see little blemishes and marks in here and there. I'm not perfect, so you know it's okay that it, it doesn't reflect as photorealism, um, which is also a type of art that some people are very much into. It's not easy, and um, I just like to take my own perspective on how I see it. Because while we could all be looking at the same image, we're not necessarily all seeing it the same way. So things don't have to be perfect in the art world. And in fact, I love things that are unique and that look special. I think to me, those are the things that I seek out when I appreciate art. So I love that. Um, the yeah, me too. Thank you. Absolutely. And then another question I had for you is when you feel frustrated, like when you feel like you've gotten to a point in a piece and you're just like, it's really bothering you or you feel like you want to kind of just scrap it and start again, what's your strategy for dealing with frustration if you're creating a project? So I have two different, actually, techniques that I use. The first one is when I'm super determined, I keep going until it looks the way I want it to look. You know, I grew up watching Bob Ross and he always called them happy accidents. So I try to keep that in mind that something that may not match what your reference picture may be or whatever you're using as a reference to create that piece of art. Um, and it, it might deviate a little, but sometimes those turn into very happy accidents that look just as beautiful or maybe even more beautiful in some instances. So I have the technique of just keep going until it looks how I want it to look. And then depending on the medium I'm working with, like if I'm with oil, paint, it has a tendency to get muddy if you keep going and don't let it dry. Uh, and it takes a very long time to dry. And actually water watercolor can do that too. So when I'm working with, with watercolor or, or oil, I'll stop and step away. I'll, I, I leave my artwork on this table right here and I sit on the other side of the table while I eat dinner and breakfast and lunch. So I stare at it and I, I look at it and I think this is what I could fix there or try this, what if I try that? Accidents um, and you know, mistakes and things happen in every single piece of art that I do. And depending on how much time I have, what medium I'm working with, either I follow through and I just keep going until it looks how I want, or I stop, I let it dry. There are some instances where I, I complete it. And I'll actually show you one that I had to scrap and I haven't scrapped yet is this painting right here. As you can see, I started and I was trying to mix oil and acrylic and I had put um, liquid white underneath and I tried to paint over it with acrylic paint 
and it did not work out. It just kept coming, bleeding through. This is actually still wet and it's from like four days ago. So, you know, this is something I'll probably end up painting over completely and just starting a different piece of artwork from it. I love that theme because I really like number one that you were not afraid to mix mediums that you know that you went through when you said okay I'll try a few different things and see what happens nothing's gonna hurt from it you know it's not gonna be a big deal and the other thing is to taking a risk so like you said the worst that happens is you just go over it and you try something else so I really I like that a lot and then my final question for you is basically to ask you how has being an artist or seeing the world from an artist's viewpoint kind of changed you as a person or how does it help you as a person? Helps me also notice the little things, uh, you know, some of the little details when you're just looking, especially when I'm out in nature and I look at flowers or just looking at leaves and things. Um, it's given me an eye for detail and it's also helped me appreciate things as they are. Because when you go out in nature and you're looking at all these things, you realize nothing is completely perfect, but yet it's still beautiful in its own right. Just like people, you know, like we're not perfect, but we're all beautiful in our own way. And I, I really noticed that um, when I'm out in nature. And I think art has allowed me to focus, you know, on the beauty in things. And see, kind of, you know, a, a feeling of relaxation and, you know, no stress and makes me very happy. So art has made me a much less serious person, that's for sure. And it's just helped me focus on, you know, on the details and the things that make everything beautiful in their own right. I absolutely love that. That was actually one of the themes of my introductory video is because I feel like since we are in our home spaces or maybe, you know, lucky enough to be in a backyard, we are just going to see a lot of those same things all the time, but looking at it with, you know, a fresh perspective. So I love that you brought that up. That's awesome. It's kind of right on the same wavelength. So I just want to thank you so much. I know you have been working from home and you have two young children. And so we're all kind of in that mode right now. So I can't even thank you enough for being kind enough to give me some of your time today and to talk with my students. Um, I just want to thank you for all the good that you bring to this world. Just for my students, one of the first things that Allison did was do a neighborhood cleanup when we were home. So she's always making the world a beautiful place. So thank you for joining me, Allison. I really appreciate it. Bye. Thank you so much for having me. I hope you guys enjoy this video and I hope you enjoy making all your artwork as much as I do. And I would be interested to see what your students come back with too. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Allison.